Hey guys and welcome to today's video. Those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Maria and today I'm going to be trying out a powder foundation. It is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Matte Powder Foundation. This has an SPF of 10. This is the packaging that it comes in and I picked this up from Mecca Beauty here in New Zealand. I picked up the shade 3N1 in Ivory Beige because I've been a fan for many, many years of the original liquid foundation, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Foundation. It is just perfect for oily skin. And I have that in two shades. I have 3N1 and 3N2. The 3N2 I wear more in the middle of summer, but the 3N1 is the one that I wear more throughout the year for the cooler months winter and spring so that's why I thought I'd pick up the shade in this powder foundation now I don't own a lot of powder foundations I have a couple one I reviewed last year it was the Fenty one and I really like the finish of that so I thought I would pick this up and see what I thought of it I have tried this once and it does give a really beautiful finish. This has 12 grams of product and on the back it says multi-use foundation and setting powder with all day wear. Versatile formula is silky soft, weightless, flawless. Controls oil and shine and stays color true. It says customize your coverage with a flip of the two-sided applicator. Now this does have an applicator inside it and I'll show you that in a minute. I don't use those applicators, I use a brush to put powder foundation on. I just think it gives an even better finish because I buff it in and by the time I've finished it looks like I've put on a liquid foundation. But the applicator inside has two sides to it and it says the sponge side gives full coverage and the velvety side for medium. And it says wet the applicator for sheer coverage. So you can have the sheer and you can build it up. Now when I used this with a brush, this was last week, I got a solid medium finish from it. I don't think you would call it a full coverage. So I'll just open it up so you can take a look at the packaging. So the case that it comes in has a beautiful design on the front. It is very reflective. So when I hold it up, you'll see my camera and the monitor I have to the right there. But it has the Estee Lauder engraved on the front. It is really lovely. And then the classic navy blue colouring on the bottom. So then you just press it and when you open it, there is a mirror inside. And this is what the powder foundation looks like. And then underneath, you just pull that up quite easily and the applicator sponges inside and just like they said one side feels more like a sponge and the other side more velvety but as I said I don't use those I'm going to use a brush to put mine on and buff the foundation in. So I've done all my skincare for the morning and I also have my SPF on I wear a lot of SPF it's a SPF 50 and I use a quarter of a teaspoon on my face. But I've still got to put on primer, so I'm going to use one of my favorite ones at the moment. It's the new Hourglass Primer. It's the Vanish Airbrush one. So I'm just gonna put one pump of that on my finger and then just dot that around my face. I just find that this primer is working so well with a lot of foundations that I own, it's really, really lovely. So when it comes to powder foundations and putting on concealer, there are two different ways people do this. So normally I do wear a liquid foundation and I put all that on first and then any concealer that I need to put on under my eyes or the rest of my face, I put that on after. Now with powder foundation, some people prefer to do that first. They think there's less chance of things caking up but today I'm going to put this powder foundation on first before I do the corrector just to show you what it looks like when I did this the other day I thought that using the concealer over the top I thought it looked fine and for me it didn't crease or move around or look cakey throughout the day 
So the type of brush that I use to put on a powder foundation is one that has more of a flat top. So this one is bigger. This is the Sonia G Face One and this covers a lot more area. So I'm going to start off with that one. There's also the Sonia G. This is the Smooth Buffer and it is similar to the Face One but it is just smaller and that's quite good for doing the smaller areas. The thing with these brushes is that they're not very densely packed. So if you could get a brush similar to this, but was more densely packed, then you're more likely to get a fuller application and a fuller coverage when you apply it as well. But once I've applied with the face one, then I'm gonna to go to this brush. This is the only other one I have that has that type of shape. And this is the Tukahoto, this is the F02 brush and it's a lot smaller but it's a lot more densely packed so if there's areas that I think need a little bit more coverage because I have redness on my cheeks there's some sunspots here and there and if I think they need a little bit more coverage then I will use this brush to do that so I'm just going to take the face one and swirl that into the powder and then start buffing the foundation in. The other day when I put this on it gave a really beautiful velvety type finish and I'm sure part of that is using a brush to buff it in. So I'm just going to go back and slowly start building Stay. it up. Another minute let me hold you You might be late for work that's okay Every day I get to know you and all your flaws and nothing to change. So that is with one layer of the powder foundation on. And as I was saying, this is it's not a very dense brush, so the one layer gives a light coverage. It evens out the complexion, but I can still see a bit of my red through here, but it does feel velvety smooth. It really feels like I've put on a liquid foundation, sort of like a very soft velvet matte type of foundation. So I'm going to do another layer using the same brush. When you wake up, freckles with no makeup, I just want to take up all your time and stay put. Humor mixed with perfume takes over the and Now there is definitely more coverage. It is covering up my redness so now I would say this has a medium finish getting towards a strong medium finish and it's covered the sunspot here quite well doing that it's still a little bit visible on the top of my nose where I have some and the sunspot that I have up here I've also been putting the foundation under my eyes just so you can see what it looks like but it doesn't look cakey in any way the other reason why I like buffing in a powder foundation is it sort of heats up the product and that helps it sort of melt into the skin. So once you've applied it, I don't think you can really tell the difference between a liquid and how a powder looks. And as I was saying, I did wear this the other day and it lasted really beautifully too. I didn't need to retouch or repowder it. A little bit of my oil started to come through, but it was just a really nice glow. I didn't look overly greasy or oily or anything like that. So just to give a little bit of extra coverage on those couple of areas there, I am going to use the Chukahoto brush and I'm just going to do the same thing. And I can see straight away that on this brush there is a lot more product that's being picked up. And that's because it's more dense. So you can see using a much more dense brush that now the sunspots here are completely covered. So now I would say this is going towards a full coverage. I'm just going to go over these bits here. Normally I wouldn't. If it was just me putting on makeup for the day, I would leave it. But I just want to show you how this builds up with using this more dense brush. You know, is there anybody else? So 
you can see now on these areas here, you can't see any redness. I don't think you'd be able to see that sunspot there. I can only just vaguely see it. So you can definitely build it up more towards that full coverage, but it still feels beautiful on the skin and it doesn't look cakey at all. One thing I wouldn't do is probably, I haven't tried it out, but that's keep building the foundation under my eyes. I just did that one layer with this brush and then I'm gonna put some concealer over the top. I get the feeling that if you kept adding powder to this area under here, you would start to get quite cakey looking. So that's with all the powder foundation on now and I think it gives a beautiful look to the skin. It's just some reason that I tend to prefer liquid and I, it's just what I've used for so long since I've been young. But when you apply powder in the proper way, it doesn't look powdery at all. It does look really, really lovely. I also think that this would be a lovely powder over the liquid foundation as well to set it. It could have both uses. And again, if you just use a soft brush to set down the liquid foundation, I think that this would be perfect for that as well. Now I'm gonna put on some concealer. I'm gonna use the Sisley, it's the Fito Eclat, and this is in shade two. And I'm just gonna put a tiny amount on. I never put a large amount of concealer on. And I just start in the inner corner. And today in the mail, a whole set of brushes arrived, the BK Beauty and the Angie Hot and Flashy brushes. So I'm gonna use the A506 to distribute the concealer under my eyes. This is the very first time I've used this brush. I've heard really good things about this one. They're really soft brushes. They are synthetic, but they are super soft. So it doesn't feel irritating under my eyes at all. So always when I finish with a brush, I always tap the product in with my finger as well. So now I've put my concealer on. It looks just fine. It doesn't look, I don't think it looks cakey at all. I will keep an eye on it during the day and if I think that it does start to look cakey, I will pin a comment below and let you know about that. But I'm pretty impressed with this brush and I love the size of it too and it's angled. So it's like a mini foundation brush that BK Beauty have. They have the 101 foundation brush which I really love for putting liquid foundation on. And this is just like a mini version of this. It's beautiful and soft and it's angled just perfectly for distributing the concealer under your eyes. It's a really lovely brush. So I'm looking forward to trying out the rest of the set. So now I'm just gonna put on the rest of my makeup and then I'll be back so you can take a look with all my makeup on. And I'll also show you what this looks like in natural light as well. And here is the finished look. Now normally when I've put my foundation on a liquid one, I would then powder over my foundation with either the Sisley or the Chanel or one of the other powders that I have. And I always put on under my eyes a powder, it's the By Terry Press Powder one. But I didn't put any powder under my eyes today. I think they look really good like they are. I think by using this powder foundation underneath first and then the Sisley liquid over the top, I think that's really enough. And I'm pretty sure that if I then started adding more powder on top, then things could start to look cakey. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And of course, no powder on top of this powder foundation either. The other day when I wore it, I didn't repowder it and it looked really lovely throughout the day. I've pulled out a Lancome eyeshadow palette that I did a video on last year sometime when they brought out a couple of different color stories. And this one is Bronze Absolute. And I loved it when I tried out the video. And it's just that I have so many eyeshadows that I'd sort of forgotten about it. But I saw it there and thought I would wear it today. And it is a really beautiful palette. And the eyeshadows just, they blend like a dream. And this color story is really, really beautiful. 
on my cheeks I've got the new it's the Bobbi Brown it's the crushed creamy color for cheeks and lips I've only got this on my cheeks today I did a video on that probably about three or four weeks ago now but I'll put a link up to that here and I'm wearing the fairly new it's the Chanel one of the balms and this is in fluty coral and I quite like wearing these orange coral colors when I'm wearing a little bit of green eyeshadow I think they go really lovely together so it's been a little while since I first applied this powder and this is what it's looking like I don't think you would even know that this is a powder foundation if I went up to someone and asked you think I'm wearing a liquid or powder foundation I really don't think they would be able to guess or be able to decide which is which. I think when it's buffed in, it just gives an absolutely beautiful finish. But what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pop into our lounge. That's where we've got a whole lot of big windows. And I'll just show you what this looks like in natural light as well. So this is in my lounge area. And as I was saying, there's a big window in front of me and to the left and right as well. And it's a really sunny day here. So this is what the foundation looks like. I'm looking in the viewfinder at the same time. And I think it looks really, really beautiful. Really lovely foundation. You can see that it's not settling into any of my lines. And I don't think you can tell that it's a powder foundation. I really think it looks as good or actually even better than some liquid foundations. It has a really beautiful finish. So whether under these lights here, which are always really flattering, or even in the natural light, I think this foundation looks really lovely. And I will definitely be wearing this again. It feels beautiful on the skin. It doesn't feel heavy at all. It doesn't feel like you've caked on powder. As I was just saying, it really, it feels like a liquid foundation. It's really, really lovely. So as I said, I've worn it before throughout the day and really it's just my natural oils that come through. So I'm really pleased that I finally picked this foundation up. I think it is really, really lovely. So if you do wear powder foundations and you want one that has more staying power or a little bit more matte but doesn't look matte but gives the effect of a matte foundation especially if you have oily skin then this is definitely worth a try it is really really beautiful or if you haven't tried powder foundations and you love the Estee Lauder double wear the original stay in place liquid then I think you'll really love this powder foundation as well and as I was saying earlier in the video I think that this would go beautifully, this powder as well, over the top of any other foundations that you're wearing as well, just to set things in place and give it more of a matte look. But overall, I'm really pleased that I picked it up. I think it's a really lovely foundation. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Bye.